installment of AA Computers and Technology, and that's right, once again, we're taking a look at the IBM eServer X Series Model 220 at this point and beating a dead horse. We've done like five videos on the same computer already. Uh, but once again, we're going to take a look at the benchmarks on this PC. I said it in all my other videos that we're going to do a benchmark video, uh, and I'm not one to lie, so we are going to do a benchmark video. Unfortunately, I could not get all the benchmarks to run on this PC that I wanted to due to the part, or due to the fact that um, this CPU does not support the SSE2 instruction set, so a lot of the benchmarks will not run, but I did get um, the performance test 7.0 up and running, and of course, um, I also have another one. I don't just like to use one benchmark because I think that's kind of boring and I like to see multiple results. Um, I also have Prime95, which yes, is a stress test, but can also be used as a benchmark um, along with a stress test. I think we'll run both of them just, you know, just for fun. Might as well see how hot these two Pentium 3s can get um, because I haven't really tested that yet. So let's go ahead and get started. I know that we've seen the internals of this computer like 50 times already, but we're going to do it again. Let's take a look inside this PC. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos on this computer, go ahead and check them out. The links will be in the description because I go way, 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 way more in depth uh, in those videos as far as system spe specifications and everything else goes um, for this PC. I'm not going to go too in depth right now. I'm just going to read off some of the basic system specifications and then you guys can check out the videos in the description because I think you guys should really watch those um, because I, this computer is actually really neat. So let's go ahead and pop down here, move the system over so we can get a better camera angle. And here are all of our goodies inside. Uh, so you can see our two Pentium 3 processors right here, each of them running at 1.2 gigahertz and each of them equipped with 512 kilobytes of cache on board. Below that we have 1.5 gigabytes of PC 133 SD RAM. This is a one gigabyte stick right here, 256 megabyte stick right here, and each of these are 128 megabyte sticks. And additionally, I did have to throw in this Vision Tech 7000 video card because the onboard video was not adequate to run Windows 7. Unfortunately, the drivers for this video card will not install on Windows 7. I swear, I got like 50 comments on my other videos saying that, yes, the drivers will work, you know, the, the Catalyst um, control software should work on Windows 7, uh, and, and like 50 other comments just like that, and I've tried it, and I've tried it, and I've tried it, and the drivers will not work with Windows 7, so just to get that out of the way, I cannot install the video drivers for this video card on this operating system. I would really love to, because things would move a lot better. Um, Basic animations would be a lot smoother as far as the uh, operating system goes, but I cannot do that. So please, please, no more comments about that. And I think that's really uh, about it as far as all these system specifications that you need to know. Once again, if you want a more in-depth look at this, go ahead and check out the links in the description. As you can see, Passmark is open right now, and we're going to go ahead and run the benchmarks. And I'm not going to do it in real time. I'm going to fast forward this because I know some of your attention spans are really, really, really short because I sometimes get complaints about that. Um, so I just gave up on trying to do real time benchmarks and stuff like that because it just takes too long and people get bored and they don't know how to skip through the video. So we're just going to run a full benchmark and I'm going to fast forward through it. I am still going to show everything, but it's just going to be sped up. All right, you're about to run all tests. This may take several minutes. Are you sure you want to continue? And yes, I'm really only interested in uh, the CPU and memory results. Um, I don't even think we can get the video card results since the proper drivers are not installed, but we'll go ahead and run a full test regardless. Yes, I want to continue. All right, so the results are in, and you can see all of our statistics are listed up here. It took just over 20 minutes to complete the benchmark, and I'm comparing it up against three generic computers right now. I'm actually a little bit disappointed. The IBM E server performed a bit lower than I thought it would, actually a lot lower than I thought it would. Um, but then again, this is an older CPU architecture. There are some bottlenecks between having two physical processors on one board. Um, so it's not necessarily a surprise. I was just hoping it would score a little bit higher, especially higher than a Pentium 4. But let's go ahead and check out the specifications of the machines that we're comparing this up against. All right, so we have a generic 
dual core Athlon machine running at 2.8 gigahertz with a rating of 728. That's actually pretty high. Uh, I'm also comparing it up against a generic Pentium 4 machine. Uh, the Pentium 4 is 3.1 gigahertz and then we have a core 2 duo of course I didn't really expect it to compete with the core 2 duo uh, but that's running at 2.6 gigahertz and scored a rating of 846 so this is this Pentium 3 machines all the way at the bottom of the totem pole, uh, pole unfortunately Let's move on over to the CPU mark first. Um, I think in all of these tests the CPUs scoring last oh except for the Pentium 4 machine was the CPU multimedia instructions. We actually scored a lot higher than the Pentium 4. The Pentium 4 didn't do too well there, and probably because of some sort of architecture issue. But besides that, you know, it looks like we scored pretty low um, in every single one of the results. So the total CPU mark, uh, we scored a 508, actually coming in pretty close to the Pentium 4 machine running at 3.2 gigahertz. Oh, which scored a score of 574. So not bad, 12.9% uh, difference there. Scrolling down, we can take a look at each of the individual categories. I don't really want to read each of these off, but you can if you want to. I'll just scroll down so you can take a look at all these. And really, not too much of a surprise. It looks like there was a bottleneck between the two CPUs, and the fact that this is an older architecture, once again, um, kind of degraded the performance of this machine. Yep. And, yep, we are at the bottom of the list. So let's go ahead and move on to the 2D graphics mark. I don't think we got any results for the 3D because, once again, the drivers weren't installed. Yeah, it's just the results for the, um, the other machines that we're comparing this against. But we did actually get a 2D graphics mark, uh, and these aren't going to be accurate due to the fact that, uh, unfortunately, once again, we don't have the graphics drivers installed. So these aren't even valid. Uh, I'm just going to scroll through these real quick. You can read, off, read it off to, um, uh, yeah, you can <laughs> barely scoring anything because we're just using the generic Windows driver. So this is really pathetic right here. All right, we don't want to look at those. And let's look at the generic system rating. All right, so here's the summary. Uh, the total pass mark rating for the system is 200. We couldn't complete all the benchmarks because once again, graphics drivers weren't installed, so we couldn't run those benchmarks. We couldn't run a CD benchmark because I didn't have a CD in there, and I really don't see a point in doing that. I don't, I don't, I don't like messing with that. Um, oh, but we didn't take a look at the disk mark or memory mark because I want to see what that scored. Uh, memory mark. So we have 1.5 gigabytes of PC133 SD RAM in here. Um, eh. Ooh, yeah, these these other PCs probably have DDR and DDR2 installed, so it makes sense that we're all the way at the bottom. DD, our, our PC133 is pretty obsolete compared to DDR or DDR2. And our disk mark, once again, um, if you haven't seen my previous video, we are running Windows 7 live off a flash drive right now, so it's not going to perform too well. And you can see that it didn't perform too well, unfortunately. Yep, we're all the way at the bottom for all of these results. So, I wasn't really expecting anything to perform too well, except for the CPU. I'm a little bit disappointed about the CPU results. I thought it would score a little bit higher since we had two physical CPUs, but that bottom that came in here and shot down the results, along with the fact that we're using an older architecture. Um, so, I'm a little bit disappointed there. But it's interesting to check out the benchmarks for the system, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to Prime95. Prime95 is open now, and I'm just going to go ahead and select the benchmark option. And we are starting the benchmark. Let me go ahead and bring up Task Manager, because I think that might be interesting for you guys to check out. I'm going to zoom out. Actually, you know what? I don't think the results go over that far, so I'll pop it over here. There we go. And I'll just leave it running. So here are our somewhat disappointing but still interesting results. Um, this thing scored a lot lower once again than I thought it would. Uh, and it did come out a little bit weird since we do have two physical CPUs. I have ran Prime with one physical CPU before um, and then analyzed the results that way. But this came out just a bit differently. I'm kind of um, speculating on what some of this really means. Uh, because I've used Prime once again before but that was with one CPU. This is just a tad bit different. Uh, but as you can see... Um, when we use both of the CPUs and two workers, it brings up 
two separate results for each CPU, I'm assuming. Um, so that's just a bit odd. But I also have a chart up here right next to me. And unfortunately, it isn't benching this as if it had multiple cores. So it's not benching um, the CPUs together and running it as a multiple core system, unfortunately, which is what I wanted it to do. Um, it's actually benching each CPU and yielding a separate result for it, which is kind of weird. Um, but I guess that still works. It wasn't really what I was hoping for once again. But let's go ahead and take a look at the first test. I'm going to skip some of these and just move over to the uh, 1792K test because that's what's up on the charts back there. I'm going to look at the test that just took advantage of one CPU. So one CPU is actually being benchmarked and the other one's just being left idle. And our average time was 374.62 milliseconds. Now I'm going to pop over to the chart over here. And this has a ton of processors on here. I mean, you can see this thing. This thing goes on forever. It was hard to actually single out. Um, gosh, can I get this in focus? It was actually hard to, uh, really hard to single out processors that were similar to the Pentium 3 because there's just so many results on this page um, for Prime 95. But what I really want to take a look at is a Pentium 4 running at a similar clock speed. So here's the Intel Pentium 4 running at 1.7 gigahertz and that scored a 187.46. Um, so the uh, Pentium 4 scored just a little bit over two times the performance of the Pentium 3 processor. The larger test, the 4096K test with one CPU, our average time was 896.30. So let's just say 900 um, to round things off nice and simple. And if we move back over to the Intel Pentium 4 stats right here, and we move all the way to the right, which is going to be that test that we are looking for, uh, we scored a 561 or the Pentium 4, I should say, scored a 561.85. So similar results between the two tests. Pentium 4 is doing a little bit better, once again, because it's a newer processor architecture and it's running at what uh, a higher clock speed, obviously. Uh, instead of 1.2 gigahertz, we're um, up here at 1.7 gigahertz. So I want to take a look at one more processor. In order to save time, um, because this video is getting a bit lengthy, I'm going to take a look at one more single core processor, and that's going to be the AMD Semperon uh, running at 1.6 gigahertz. So we're going to scroll over here. It performed about as well as the Pentium 4 processor did. Um, we're having a score of 192.45 right here. Once again, our score for the um, Pentium 3 was, if I can get it up, I should make a spreadsheet for this next time, 374.62. So once again, almost double the performance. This is a similar processor to the Pentium 4, manufactured around the same time period. Um, so that's what we should expect. And if we move all the way over, the AMD Simpron did perform a little bit better here uh, with the larger test scoring a 473. Um, so the performance is just a little bit or over double here. Um, compared to the single core Pentium 3 processor. All right, so that's gonna be about it for this video. And hopefully the last time in a while that we'll see this IBM E server, because as I said earlier, the last few videos have just been all about this computer and you guys are probably getting tired of it. I'm um, sorry about the fact that I was kind of awkward trying to take a look at the Pride 95 benchmarks and take a look at the table on the other computer. I should just um, had it up on my screen and did a screencast of it. I think it would have made things a lot easier. Maybe it had made a lot more sense to you guys. So that was kind of weird. Um, pass mark ran just fine. I didn't see any issues with that. Um, but the Pride 95 thing, I'm going to try to edit it to uh, make it a little bit easier for you guys to check out the results. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I haven't gotten to editing it yet. After this clip, we're going to get started on that and hopefully get this clip out uh, before the next week starts. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, and of course, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, I enjoyed benchmarking the system, checking out the results. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.